right, thanks, Paul. Okay, it's uh, 7 o'clock. We're going to call this meeting to order. Um, Judy, would you take the roll, please? I would love to. Reed. Here. Skiles. Here. Tozell. Here. And Jerry Sims is sitting in for Lori Askland, who's out of town. Tim Toby is um, away on a family matter. We also have at the table Amy Blankenship, who's here um, as village solicitor. Hey, Welcome, Amy. Thank you. Uh, we have an agenda that was generated. Um, if uh, anyone is, everyone is okay with that, we'll stick to it. If you want to add something or detract from it, uh, now's the time to do that. If not, then we can go right into the review of the minutes uh, from the 9th of February. Um, Hopefully everyone's had a chance to review these. Yeah. Um, is there anyone that has any comments on the first page? The second? The third? Fourth? Or the fifth? If not, can we have a motion to accept these minutes as is? I move approval of the minutes. Anyone second? Second. Thank you, Rose. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Abstain. Jerry will abstain since he wasn't. You were here, actually. I was here. <laughs> okay. Uh, next item on the list is. Um, Communications, I don't think we have any. Um, then we have citizens' comments, which is a time to, for anyone to address uh, Planning Commission on any item that's not on the agenda. Uh, this is your, your moment. Um, if there are none, um, you know, actually, I, I would like to make one amendment to the, uh, the agenda here. And I was wondering, Jerry, could you, uh, I don't want to shock you with this or drop okay. this on you, can you for a couple of minutes talk about the discussion you had with the trustees during your joint meeting about the plan, um, comprehensive plan um, action group or whatever you want to call it? Okay. <clears throat> Let me think back. Uh, it, the uh, <clears throat> Richard Lapidia said it's, Kind of brought up the notion, and John, you know, you weren't there, were you? I, I was. I was ill. Uh, were you there? Yeah, sir. I was. Okay. In any any rate, uh, he he talked about the uh, comprehensive plan, and there were items in in the plan that he felt had been accomplished, but he also felt that there were some actions based on the the plan that. Uh, both the uh, township and council should look at, and he suggested that we uh, name someone to kind of spearhead that. If, if, am I saying that correctly? I'm sorry. He, he, he kind of named, he, he kind of made reference that we needed someone to spearhead some of the items in the comprehensive plan. Uh, Unfortunately, neither township, neither a council member, or a council member stepped up to say that they would would honcho it. So it, it kind of fell back on Richard to say, well, maybe they, they might be a group of citizens and so forth that may want to uh, uh, take that on. So we kind of left that in in his court. Uh, if I'm correct, we really didn't get into a lot of discussion on, on the plan itself, other than the fact that some items have been um, completed and there are some items left to be uh, be completed. So that's that's kind of how. That's, but but no direction came out of it for either okay. council okay. or or township or planning to, to to do anything at this point. Okay. Am I correct? It, there was uh, it's. Or, he I think if I'm remembering the right discussion was suggesting that that perhaps needed to be an outside group that was creating that effort because um, both council and planning commission 
regularly bring aspects of the comprehensive plan into what it is that they do and the documents that they put together. But um, he was sort of feeling that an outside person could help to tie some of those elements together and work with the township trustees to kind of bridge the information gap. Um, and then that was, in fact, better done by someone who was not seated on either of those. Easy. Okay, thanks. And the reason I brought it up is because in the comp plan, there's a there's even a group that's that's called out to be formed to kind of and a, and a series of established goals that are, I think it's ten years, but yeah, five that was five years ago. So. Right. Um, and some of those things have been accomplished, like the new zoning code and some other things. But it, I, I would encourage you guys to do that. I mean, I think it's important. Mm -hmm. And uh, and if it means someone from this group. You know, being part of that body, then I mean, I think that's appropriate as well. Okay. Okay. Sorry for that diversion. Yeah, that's all. Um, the next item on the list is a, a consent item for a lot split. Do you want to take the lead here on a quick description of? Um, yeah, th this is a consent item, which means that um, the planning commission does not need to take any action on it unless they feel the need to take action on on or discuss this. But uh, basically. Uh, the property at 1126 Livermore Street, uh, which is owned by Samantha Eckenrode, she's uh, proposing to divide the lot into three separate lots. And uh, the criteria is listed in the requirements um, that we have to find that the proposed division, subdivision is located along an existing public road and involves an opening, widening, or extension of any street or road or public utilities. That the proposed subdivision is not contrary to applicable subdivision or zoning regulations. That no more than five lots be created following division of the original parcel. That attractive land post for minor subdivision has not been involved previously in minor subdivisions approval during the last two years. And if it is unlikely to be further subdivided subsequently, uh, the village has provided provide sufficient guarantee of necessary easements on the property owner. And the property owner specifically dedicated the same. The recording instrument has a notation stating that each buildable lot would be provided with separate and adequate water and sewage connected, connecting laterals. An approved rec record instrument has been prepared by a registered surveyor found in the minor subdivision. The same sketch of location subdivision bearings and distances along each lot line. And a certificate that proper iron pins have been driven at each corner lot, each lot corner to delineate proper property boundaries. And that a copy of the recording instrument has been submitted to the planning commission by the zoning administrator at least 10 days prior to a regular scheduled planning commission meeting. And if the planning commission takes no action at that meeting, the minor subdivision is deemed approved. Um, I reviewed this um, and did the calculations in the chart that's on the back, of the second page of the staff reports. All of the uh, proposed lots that will be split meet our zoning uh, setback and lot area requirements for the R dash um, R dash A zoning designation. Um, the properties in general primarily. Uh, conform to the regulations. Uh, there's only one concern that would be the track three could be subdivided further, but only if the existing buildings are removed. So at this time, it, would, it could not be subdivided, but it does have a sufficient amount of area and frontage to be divided in the future. Uh, based on all this information, uh, recommended that if the Planning Commission were to take this up as a discussion item, uh, that they, they would should approve the lot division with the findings for that is in compliance with section 1226.11a of the village code of ordinances do you have any questions regarding my report i don't in fact as far as i understand we don't need to take any action on this is that correct that's correct i guess i would recommend to you folks that we don't do anything just right. let john okay i agree uh i do i have a question i don't see the certificate of proper iron pins on the uh, survey record. Uh, am I just missing it? Uh, this is just a general plat survey, but I could check. I could uh, ask the surveyor to see if they have those provided and have them on the. Uh, uh, if it's a requirement, then. Mm -hmm. But I don't think we should take any action. It, and I did go out. The, the pins are there and marked with the are they paint. Paint ribbon or flag or something. Yeah. Okay. 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 Well, thanks, John. I guess we'll just move on then. Well, is that? Um, do I need to? I, well, I have two questions. One is, uh, it would seem that you'd need to do a motion to approve the consent items. Right. 
Yes. And, and, and I had a further question. Then are the other items on the agenda, those were ones that you were going to bring a resolution for? What's that? If, if they're approved, that you were going to bring a resolution of approval? Yes. For each of those? But for the, and this is just consent by motion? Correct? Yeah, consent is not a resolution. A map amendment or text amendment or, or a approval for a conditional use or something would. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we need a motion, Judy, is what you're saying? Correct. And it's moving approval yes. of the request. Uh, you're moving uh, approval of the consent, consent agenda, of consent. the consent item. Yes. Okay, I move approval of the consent agenda. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Yeah, we probably, <laughs> I think, is this our first time using it? We probably should have explained the process a little bit before we. Yeah, we don't really do the consent items very often. Mm -hmm. So, And this is really the only time it comes up. Right. Uh, when I looked at the regulations, it didn't even say it was a consent agenda. It said it has to go before the Planning Commission and they can decide to take no action. So, so if we decide to take consent, action, though, then what happens? Uh, then we would have a discussion about it. Have a discussion uh, and then typically potentially in, have a public hearing? Well, you would, you would, it would be the public hearing. This is the consent agenda is on the... Gotcha. Is on the, you would basically, in planning commissions that have consent agendas, what happens is, let's say there's a list of five items. You say, oh, this, uh, this last bit, I want to talk about this last bit. And you make a, you make a motion to move 1126 Livermore out of the consent agenda for, for discussion. Gotcha. And, then okay. it's, and then it's brought out. And then, and then I would give my staff report on it. And then you guys would open up for, uh, for discussion between yourselves and the public and then have a decision on that. Thanks. You're welcome. You know, we're all, we're all amateurs up here. <laughs> <laughs> Volunteers. It's OK. Okay, the next item is public hearing on the rezoning application for 104 Xenia Avenue. Uh, typically, we'll have a discussion with staff and then open up the public hearing uh, after comments, close that, and then have further discussion if necessary, um, uh, and, then, um, and then move on the application. So, John, do you want to start again? Sure. Um, this is application for 15003 for the a map amendment for 104 Xenia Avenue. Um, the, the property, which is known as the Restaurant Peaches, was somehow zoned conservation when the zoning map was updated in 2013. Um, however, the property has been utilized as a restaurant for over a decade. Staff identified and brought this uh, conflict to uh, in the zoning code to the Planning Commission uh, to initiate a rezoning efforts. The commission voted in its February 2015 meeting to rezone the proper to uh, begin that uh, process of rezoning this from C conservation of gateway gateway overlay to uh, B1 central business with gateway overlay. Uh, requirements are outlined in your staff report, section 1280.02B, which say that uh, the rezoning must be consistent with the goals, policies, and future land use map of the Yellow Springs Comprehensive Development Plan and the Vision Yellow Springs and Miami Township document or if conditions have changed significantly since the plan was adopted, it is consistent with recent development trends in the area, that it is compatible with the site's physical, geological, hydrological, and other environmental features, that uh, it is compatible with surrounding uses in terms of land sustainability, suitability, impacts on the community, density, potential influence on property values and traffic impacts can be accommodated uh, on the subject property considering existing planned infrastructure, including roads, sanitary sewers, storm sewer, water sidewalks, and light, road lighting, and does not result in a spot zone. Planning Commission is making a recommendation to council on this one, so you can make a recommendation to approve, deny, or uh, attach conditions uh, to the, to the uh, recommendation. Uh, staff looked at this and found that the proposal meets the requirements of section 1280.02B, that is, uh, Existing commercial establishment is not a park, is not planned to be a park in either the uh, comprehensive plan or the vision plan for Miami Township in Yellow Springs. Uh, and finally, this is not a spot zone as it would just add to the existing B1 zone that's adjacent to the property. Uh, so basically, just looking at the z adopted zoning map from 2013, and once we get GIS, we'll update this because we have a couple of discrepancies such as A88 Dayton is now a PUD and uh, a few other things. But if you look at this little subset in downtown, it's very hard to kind of see where the streets are here. They didn't name all the streets. And if you see really closely on Dayton Street where it bends here, it looks like they drew a line in GIS. 
and then overlaid it, they thickened it, uh, which is, uh, you can you draw a line, and you draw a very thick line to highlight that road. So this is the bike trail, and I have the assumption that maybe they were looking at this and seeing, make, maybe thinking this was the train station, which is actually over here where this line is. Um, but you can't really tell because they put the line over it. So um, I think that's where that kind of happened. I looked at the online GIS and I matched all the parcels together to make sure I wasn't hallucinating. <laughs> so uh, it, it, it did turn out that indeed this was a, a mistake, uh, apparently uh, on the zoning map. So that's how that happened. But I figured I'd show you some background as, as to how I found that um, on the map. So do you guys have any questions for, for me? Thanks. Questions for John? Okay, uh, any further discussion here? If not, we'll open the public hearing. Um, we'll open the public hearing. If anyone has any comments about this item, feel free to come up and uh, state them in the microphone, identify yourself. Looks like it's not a very controversial item. Uh, if there's no comments, I'll close the hearing. Uh, any further discussion? I have a question. Um, did we have to like put up a sign or anything for this? Because the village initiated the request, we're not we're not, we're not governed by the same uh, regulations as a general applicant for property owner. Okay. But we did notify all the property owners and adjoining property owners, and everyone within about 100 feet of the property. So we went above and beyond with that scope. Okay. okay. Anything else for us? Uh, no. I think we're good. Uh, do we have a motion? Do we want to um, move it, that? The motion to recommend to, to council, council to approve right. this change in the zoning code. I move okay. to recommend this change in the zoning code. Okay. Second? I second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 For clarification purposes, that is a motion to rezone 104 Zinni Avenue from C-1 Conservation with uh, Gateway Overlay District to B-1 Central Business with Gateway Overlay District. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You got that, Judy? The last part you swallowed there, John. Um, gateway to B-1 Central Business, Central business. with a Gateway Overlay District. Thank you. Okay, the next item on the agenda is the uh, right-of-way vacation request from the college uh, for Herman Street. 1504. Um, 1505, I think. Is that right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, John, do you want to start over again? And uh, <laughs> sure. Yeah. And these are kind of out of order. I uh, from the submission to the uh, to the agenda. I apologize for that. Um, okay, I'm flipped. So uh, this is application 15-005 for a right-of-way vacation request from Antioch College. Uh, they are requesting to uh, the village to vacate a right-of-way. The eastern portion of Herman Street portion is located at the turnaround, uh, what east, excuse me, east of the turn, turnaround on Herman, uh, and then extends a length of about 1,022 feet to Corey Street. Uh, it is 25 feet wide. Paper, uh, the street is a paper street. This proposal was heard on December 8, 2014. However, the Planning Commission decided to table the application. Uh, the street is located in the E1 Educational Institution District. The requirements for a, uh, a right of way vacation are outlined in Section 1224.02b of the Village Code of Ordinances. They are the relationship between the proposed action, oh, sorry, that the vacation could go forward with the relationship between the proposed. After reviewing the relationship between the proposed action and the Yellow Springs Comprehensive Development Plan, uh, the staff recommendations concerning such things as present land use, uh, adjacent property access, utility easement, and transportation needs, the validity of the applicant's reasons for requesting the vacation, uh, general citizen reaction to the proposed vacation, uh, and abutting property owner support or lack thereof for the proposed vacation. So those are the items that the Planning Commission should consider in uh, evaluating the right-of-way vacation. Uh, the Planning Commission uh, make a recommendation to approve, deny, or have conditional approval to the Village Council regarding the right-of-way vacation request. The Village Council will ultimately approve 
or deny or approve of conditions the uh, request. Uh, I went through the list here and outlined what uh, staff concerns were. Uh, as, as far as connection uh, relationship with the uh, comprehensive plan, the uh, right of way is not identified in the plan as a connector for automobile traffic in the village's comprehensive plan. Uh, two staff recommendations turning uh, present land use adjacent property access, utility easements, and transportation needs. Uh, present land use historically, this area uh, it used to be the location of the uh, college golf course, and it was a uh, and now it is currently uh, adjoining land is utilized by the college as part of its farming operation and also a solar array field. Uh, adjacent property access. Uh, adjacent property is currently accessed by the cul-de-sac at the end of the, the maintained portion of Herman. And um, as far as utility easements, uh, we, I consulted with uh, department heads at Miami, uh, utility department heads and the Miami Township Fire and Department, and I uh, summarize the responses. The fire department uh, is concerned about maintaining the turnaround at the end of Herman Street, um, which appears to be partly in this area. Um, so that could be something that could be ironed out with a vacation to show that the village would have right away there uh, that wouldn't be on college land. Uh, water and electric department identified a four-inch main water line running behind President Street, which uh, is, would be right, if you can see the mouse cursor a little bit, I don't have my laser pointer with me, it was right back here. <coughs> These properties along President Street have a water main running behind them. Uh, and then there's also a water line going down the, the, the street as well, the paper street. John, that's a sanitary. Oh, sanitary, line, sorry. And his concern is that there is a, if there, the farm moves forward, uh, if it will raise the elevation of, of the land where there's a existing water, existing water line. So he is saying, uh, and I apologize, but Jason and Johnny could not be here tonight. They had uh, some stuff come up. Um, but they identified that they need to have a certain amount of ground depth for the for the water main in order to be able to access it, and if you add more to that, it, it would bring those water mains out of compliance. So that was one of the concerns that was uh, raised by uh, Johnny's uh, department. The um, the other at, uh, sewer with Jason, um, the existing sanitary sewer main runs within the adjacent uh, within the uh, undeveloped Herman Street right away, connects to the sanitary sewer main in Corey, which is around here. Uh, he's concerned that uh, over whether or not the, the runoff from the farm would meet standards by the Environmental Protection Agency and he contacted and, and looked into that and they don't have a, a, a very clear um, length or, or setback with for what a farm use would be from, uh, from a runoff but they said that it needs to be something that can't get into the storm sewer as much. So he was concerned about meeting that requirement. Uh, and then also uh, he would need uh, fencing to be at least 10 feet from the manhole in the middle of the right-of-way access if there is fencing. Basically, he needs to have five feet uh, on each side of the sewer main in order to do maintenance work. And then finally, uh, he's also concerned about the possibility of east-west access from Corey to the rest of the village. This is also highlighted in the report that Jason submitted to you guys in the packet. And this is part of the December report as well. Uh, and then Johnny's re uh, requests are, or his concerns are also outlined in the, uh, the attached uh, document from December. Uh, but those are kind of some updates on that. And then finally, the transportation needs, the right-of-way has never been utilized as a street. The majority of it is about 25 feet in width, which is too narrow to be utilized as a street according to our subdivision regulations. However, it could be utilized as a bicycle or pedestrian path in the future uh, if the village would choose to do that and hold on to the right of way. Uh, it's for concerning the validity of the applicant's reasons for requesting the vacation, the applicant stated they intend to expand their farm garden and solar array onto the site. Uh, and the plans that I believe Reggie has on the boards and I have up here are kind of illustrate some of that and I 
uh, I believe we'll be talking about that in a bit. And then uh, as far as general citizen reaction to the proposed vacation, uh, residents came to the 2014 uh, December meet, 2014 meeting and spoke uh, voicing concern about nearby property owners have not been identified for the meeting, which is why uh, we took a step back and uh, noticed the entire block for this meeting, as well as uh, we went above the uh, minimum requirements for the uh, so notice from the street up to Livermore. Is up to Livermore, yes. Okay. And then finally, um, for support or lack thereof from, a, from uh, adjacent property owners. And actually, this is where I've, I just said we mailed to Livermore, which just basically says the same thing. So um, I looked at this uh, and talked to the utilities. We still have some outstanding concerns regarding the utilities uh, with their running within the existing right of way. Uh, and then there's potential for uh, environmental concern that we need to clear up if the, uh, the farm use were to move forward or actually the existing farm use, how that ties into the village sanitary sewer line. Um, so for, with that information at this time, staff recommends that the planning commission uh, recommend that the village council not approve the uh, right-of-way vacation with the following findings and that that are is uh, vacating the right-of-way would not allow sufficient access to existing village utilities and that long-term plans presented by the applicant may conflict with utility performance and maintain maintenance in the right-of-way uh, I recommend that um, the applicant uh, present their fa their farm use expansion to uh, which is outlined in the college master plan along with an application for the right-of-way expansion in the future, and also consult with our utility departments and reach an agreement on the maintenance of the existing utilities on the paper street before moving forward on the alley on the street vacation. Uh, in the event that these things cannot work, we are interested in working with the college to explore other ways to incorporate uh, a non-vacated Herman into their master plan. Do you have any questions from our standpoint? I have one. I, you mentioned the storm sewer. Is there a storm sewer there as well? Um, there is a storm sewer here on Cory, and then there's a kind of a runoff ditch, and it's in the picture that I have in this report, and it is the. Um, but that runs through the uh, the South Solar Array. Yeah. So Jason has. I went down and took pictures. Jason identified that that was the ditch so um, so that runs down quarry down so there's quarry. not a catch basin for storm sewer though anywhere in there in, in that to my knowledge I don't I'm not sh I don't a, don't believe so a but natural swale that, that runs yeah. across south campus yeah the uh, storm sewer is running parallel with quarry street yeah okay um, and then Water from that storm dumps into Glen, mm -hmm. as you probably know. But the swale, the natural swale, is, um, is at the terminus of a stoop of a sewer, um, and so that runs the length of Livermore. That's even down East Herman, rather. Right. It terminates at that junction and turns into the swale. So do, do, do you see where the uh, man point to where that is, or do you care? Well, John, you can point it out. You know where it is, the swale. The for, swale? The, for the stormwater. You, mean, you can see it on the contours. Mm -hmm. It's right here. See right here? Right. And then it goes south through the south yes. array. Mm -hmm. And then it ties in yeah. around here. That low spot where that tree mm -hmm. is. So that's the swale. And, and see how this, the, the, the grazing is here? So that would be where the water would run off into the swale into the stormwater sewer right there. Yeah, OK. So okay. this concern is that stuff that is you know, would jeopardize the compliance of EPA from the grazing is coming down the swale into the, into the, the storm sewer. Now, is there, I was out there today, and I found the swale to a point uh, along the side of the solar panels. Now, I didn't see any connection at that point to a storm sewer. So are we saying that the storm sewer is on the other side toward Cory? Yeah, it's on, the, it's on Cory. It's like right around here. Are you talking about a catch basin? 
there's a there should be a catch basin there, I think. I I think it's just a culvert under the road. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's, yeah that, that's what I was trying to determine because because I saw a lot of ponding where the swill kind of stopped, so I was wondering where the water went from that point. Yeah, I think there's a little corrugated culvert that goes under quarry to, and in fact on the bike path there's a heavy wood what you, kind of like rail yeah, I where it drops the, into the glen. Yeah, I could see that the bike path, but I was just wondering how the water got from that swale to... The way it ponds, I think it's clogged up. I, I, I didn't have my boots on, so I couldn't get in there and see, but... Uh, in technology, right? Oh, scary. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. There's no solar yeah, field yeah, here. What's up is. with that? Yeah, wait for an update in June, I think. <laughs> yeah, go to right, right there somewhere. Right yeah. there. See there, the, that's uh, see the culvert right there. 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 Yeah, I, I found that, but I saw no way. You know, that's like you say, there's a core. So if you go over and look at the bike path. This is the bike path. Do the that's the Wings Park. Goes under, yeah. Yeah, it goes under the bike path. It goes under here. So that that is our storm Well, I'm, I'm wondering, can you can you pull up uh, the uh, cul-de-sac on uh, Herman Street? On uh, Street View. Yeah. Oh, didn't like that. I don't think so. No. Oh, Marshall, what's what? Mm -hmm. This is the yeah. cul-de-sac on okay. Her. Right, okay. So as you you walk out in it and the swill is kind of to the right, if I'm correct, okay? Yeah. And the water drains toward the um, solar array. Mm -hmm. Now, do we know if, if there's some type of drainage piping or that the village is concerned about at that point, or are we it's just the just sanitary line. Yeah. The sanitary infrastructure runs through the Herman. So the, that's, and this says, uh, Jason Ham, Hamby says that um, there was an understanding that the village would not be putting back any fencing or material la materials located closely to our said sanitary remains. Maybe the college would not be putting. Oh, no, so this, the sanitary runs right down between the solar arrays right now. So mm -hmm. if if we vacated yeah. Herman Street, the fencing, if there's, um, if there's solar panels going in there, there would be fencing that would restrict our mm -hmm. workers from accessing the sanitary lines. Is that that's, the issue? That's, that's the issue, yes. They want to be able to have clear access to the, san to the sanitary lines. If they need to replace them, or repair them in any way. Okay, let's continue this discussion with Reggie. Do you want to yeah, say so some yeah, things like about this particular? Thing brought up. And Reggie, if you, you could bring that. Uh, if you want to use those boards, you could. The, the wireless well, I like I like what okay. you had. If, I, I wouldn't have brought those things if I had known you were going to throw. I got that. that's I got awesome. This one. And You've I never got, had that capability uh, before, so. I got the other one, so I'll pull the other one up too. The five-year plan. And. Uh, so yeah. So let's we'll look at that one. Hit the page. might make them a bit smaller than I like. Is that okay? Or? Okay. Well, bring in Herman Street a little closer. It maybe blow that up and center it. Oh, that's good. Herman right here. All right. Okay. So the turnaround, mm -hmm. um, that can remain, you know, but that, that doesn't pose any problems for us. And I talked to Johnny and Jason both uh, regarding this street vacation. And Jason's concern was that sanitary line that basically comes off Herman and goes in between the two solar arrays. And maintaining uh, an easement of 10 feet, which is five feet to either side, um, that's completely doable for us. He was also concerned about uh, fencing coming across it. And what, 
what I thought we would do is where that sanitary runs through, we have gates. Um, we could work it out with the village that they would have keys to those gates. So if they ever needed to get in there, because his concern is there was a breach in that line and they had to get to it quickly, they want to be able to get there without having to run down somebody from the college and, and get a key or, or tear up fence to get at it. So I think that by doing that, that would address a lot of Jason's concerns about that sanitary line. Um, Did Jason, oh, sorry, um, oh, wait, sorry. So, and, and the other point I wanted to make was that, you know, by having a street there, it's, we're having to honor these setbacks for imaginary buildings that might be placed there. Well, it's going to be a farm. Um, so it doesn't make sense to honor these 25 feet setbacks from, uh, from that street right of way. So I'm suggesting we just, we maintain an easement for the sanitary line. You keep the turnaround. We put gates where there, where it crosses the sanitary line so that there's easy access. Um, I would agree with the thought of, it, it doesn't sound like you'd ever want to build a street there, and we certainly wouldn't want to see cars start coming across campus that way. Um, so, if nothing else, you know, vacate the street, and we could still, I mean, we would, we like the idea of a pedestrian walkway through there, or pass. Uh, we want the campus to become a, a bike and pedestrian friendly campus. Uh, so we could work with those type of things. I don't, I don't really see the tie-in as far as farm runoff to vacating the street. Whether we have a farm or we don't have a farm, I mean, that, that problem's going to exist no matter whether there's a street right-of-way or there's a sanitary easement. Where, are, where would the gates be? I guess I'm trying to visualize where they are. So the, the sanitary line, I, I'm not sure exactly where, but it comes off Herman somewhere in this area, and it, and it runs straight across like this. It gets real close to this fence here, and then it kind of cuts across this way, through this line. So right now, the so two the gates, arrays have separate fencing around them. So you can see where they've drawn fencing, but a gate could be put there, a gate could be put there. There's no fencing there, as this shows, that's open. Okay. okay, but there, there, there is a fence around the solar array on both sides. Yeah. Correct. Not well, not where the right right of way is. There's no, 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 no. I'm talking about. But where, where but around are. each array, yeah, there's right. a perimeter now, fence around both now, arrays. As, as you picture there, uh, that's going to be a rot rotational grazing area. Okay. And are you proposing to fence that area in for livestock? Yes. And, th and then have a gate. So, in, in is that the five-year plan or the short term? It's the 2014 plan. Yeah, the five. Can we put up the five-year plan? Because the five-year plan is the garden actually comes out into Herman, and actually that's the first phase of the farm expansion is really the garden expansion. which I know, um, yeah, see now the garden's out there where the Herman Street, right? Yeah. Is the, uh, so the, the rotational pens are going to be moved further down. Okay. So the, the, the livestock actually moves further, it does, it's not going to stay in the, at the same spot. Right, okay. correct. So, so the, the ducks and chickens and so forth are they, that are there now, are they on the right of way? Uh, at times, I think it is, but it's movable, and they move it quite often. Okay, so uh, the the fence with the gate that you're proposing is that going to be a movable fence, or is that see? No, that so once we expand the garden, that fence will go around the garden to protect the the vegetables that we grow there from deer and other animals that might want to get in there and eat our food. Mm -hmm. um, so so, so is, your, is your future plan to, for that always to be a garden? Yes. Okay. Yes. And, and not? Not animal pens. Okay. 
so then so the rest of that area south of that and if you notice over by corey will be set up with rotational pens okay. so so conceivably if the village had to go in there they could damage what's been planted and yeah that would be and we assume that risk oh, okay. we understand that Um, if this is approved, would you like fill in the 25 foot area between the two um, solar panel areas? Well, we'd like we'd like an option. I mean, if we can gain back some land there, and if more solar became available, I know it's not available now, but down the road as the village power consumption grows, more solar could become available, and we could add a row or two. If the you know if the street right if the street right of way is vacated, because again that's 50 feet between the two arrays. So you would be able to add like another row on each side or something like that. Right. On each side or or well if we vacated it, I think you said that uh, you would still maintain the easement mm -hmm. over. Yeah, and we wouldn't of course build any array over the. That easement. Okay, so in, in that case, then the the fence would go away, right? Um, the, the fence that would be going around the garden would go away if you turn that into an array, and it would be the the same path as we see in the present array. Well, really, only the only thing that happened there, uh, Gerald, is that we could move. We could probably add a couple of rows in closer to that sanitary line with fence there still and still be far enough away to either side of that sanitary line. Um, we wouldn't be we wouldn't be putting when you mentioned the gardens, there wouldn't be any solar over here. I'm just talking about oh, okay so what adding, oh, adding okay so what, there, what you're there. envisioning if it was if if we vacated the the right of way do you would drop it from the or 25 feet or whatever it is down to a right. smaller. Right. Okay. So currently the fences are 50 feet apart or 25 feet apart? They're 50 feet apart. Okay. The two arrays are 50 feet apart. The fences? Yeah. That meets the present. And that's because zone. of the, what, 15 feet? That's because of the street setback, what setback. setback rule. setback is 15? Or that was like 25 feet to either side. Yeah, either side okay. Of the, oh, the center line. Right. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, any more questions for Reggie? Um, thanks. Um, any more discussion here? Or do you want to open the public hearing and then come back to discussion? Sure. Yeah, that's open. Okay, let's open the public hearing. If anyone has uh, uh, comments on this item, come up and uh, address the uh, microphone. Please identify yourself for the Mike, folks. I'm okay. Mike Kelly. I um, live at the end of Kurt Street there. Um, Reggie and I have talked a lot over the last year or two about the plans on the golf course. I guess I have um, two uh, questions. I don't understand why the village would uh, give the college this opportunity to vacate the, the right of way. I haven't heard any reason why we should do that. And along those lines, I currently walk through that right of way to get to the Glen at least once a week. So I'm not sure this is, looks like it's gonna cut off uh, villagers access to, uh, to the Glen and to the bike path. Okay, thanks. Uh, anyone else? Uh, Jerry Papadena, I just have a question. Uh, right now with that easement, that gives the opportunity to um, put additional utilities in there. And if the uh, easement is granted and narrowed, then could additional utilities be put uh, in that easement in the future if, if the need arises? I would believe so. 
Are you talking about uh, how wide of an easement are you talking? It would be a 10 foot wide easement, five on each side of the, the main. Okay. Would. But it's Would sanitary, give... don't you have to put things far away from sanitary lines? You can't put a water line yeah. to a sanitary yeah. bit. You yeah. could run electric. Mm -hmm. And there'd be plenty of space to run electric if you needed to run underground for whatever reason. I can't imagine why the village would. But there is space now to run, if, to run a water line through there, right? Being um, that it's 50 feet? Well, it's 25 feet wide. But the setback is 50 feet because of yeah. So so the, so the way it is now, yeah, so the, the right water line could be. You could put some other. You can put any other line you want to. It'd be fine in there. Now, now bringing it down to 10 feet, could we still get our equipment in there? Uh, Jason indicated that the 10 feet is the minimum he would need to get his equipment in there. Seems narrow. Oh. We'll put a big enough gate for equipment. All right. I mean, that's really the only thing you need to get through. Reggie, did you talk to Jason about the gates? Is that something that you're trying no, to do? No, it's actually something I thought of afterward. Okay. About that. Okay. Okay. Um, Reggie, do you have any questions? Before we get off track here, anyone else have any comments, please? Hello, my name is Ryan Pearson. I live at 1120 President Street. Um, if I could point, I'd show you where that is, but it's uh, immediately adjacent uh, to the turnaround there on the south side. Um, I, uh, my plaintiff plea remains what it usually is, um, just kind of based on where we are with past behavior. If you have expectations, I request that you consider legislating them and getting them into the motion. Um, if there are uh, opportunities for, well, maybe this, maybe that, maybe this, then that just leads for the possibility of outcomes that you didn't anticipate and or require or expect. So I would just ask you to, con to consider that. Um, discretionary uh, legislation may not be the appropriate uh, avenue here. Um, other than that, I have no objection uh, to, the, uh, to the easement, I, uh, to the vacating the um, uh, right of way, that is. Um, and certainly have no objection to um, the village maintaining an easement um, if there are necessary services there. I um, may be missing something, but that's where it is at this point. I, I reached out to my neighbor. I don't know if you were successful in, in getting hold of the Rothmans um, there in Israel. Um, and uh, Jay indicated that he would like to stand with no comment. So thank you very much. Thanks, Ryan. Anyone else? Hi, Paul Haventroth. On Z Avenue between Allen Street and Limestone is eight or nine blocks. There are no opportunities to get to Corey Street in that distance. On this picture, we see a, a road crossing what we call the golf course. If that were to be a publicly accessible road rather than a private one, that would open up the possibility to travel from uh, Zinia Avenue to Corey Street uh, in that eight or nine block area. So if that is attractive, you might want to make that a condition of this and the next uh, request. Thank you. Thanks, Paul. Uh, anyone else? Okay, with that, I'll close the hearing. Just one more comment. Yes. Um, so regarding access, public access to that area, I mean, we do plan to have pedestrian walkways to get you from one side to the other. Um, if the barn ends up getting approved and built, the um, road that, that Paul just mentioned would be a, a service road for the uh, farm and the farm workers. It would not be intended as a, a public access road. Um, but again, and as you can see, drawn into some of the plans there, there's a pollinator path running uh, north and south. There'll be crossing paths to get you from, you know, Herman over to Corey, um, and paths to get you from Allen across South Campus 
I mean, that our intent is to make it pedestrian friendly. We want to encourage people to come visit the farm, walk through the farm, see the animals if we're able to get some, and um, view the array and view our gardens. So your, your vision for this road, is that going to be gated at Quarry Street and or? We would gate it, yeah. We would want to restrict access. What? It would be a compacted gravel road. Would that be something that could be open for fire department and? Uh... It, I mean, it could be, sure, if fire department needed access through that way, I guess. Okay. Reggie, let's talk about the road at the top of the picture. Between the By the theater. Oh, theater. yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, and I'm not quite sure if that's going to be a paved road or, you know, that's, that, right now it's a dirt trail, you know, it's, it's kind of worn itself because our farm staff has driven around that uh, area quite a bit, but um, I'm thinking that would still be a compacted gravel drive. Not sure, but again, our, our goal would be to make it accessible by the public and encourage the public to visit the farm. Okay, thanks. Um, any more questions for Reggie or John? Any discussion? Well, I guess, you know, Reggie didn't mention a, a couple things that he hadn't discussed with, with Jason. Uh, one being the, the fence with the gate. I think you said, you know, you, you hadn't discussed that with them. Uh, the uh, I, I, I still have a little concern about the the turnaround at the end of Herman Street, which is small now. Mm -hmm. And if uh, the fire department would get any larger trucks, they can't make that turnaround, which would say that the turnaround would have to be expanded. Uh, for them to be able to, to do that, you know, a larger tanker, or even if they decide to go with a ladder truck, a ladder truck with a, the hose attachment won't won't make that present turnaround. But that's true right now. Well, the present equipment, they have some concern, but I think they can make the turn. But in, in future equipment. How does that? impact whether or not we vacate the well, paper road. I'm just curious. Well, that's be because the turnaround would have to be expanded to to accommodate. Either way, vehicle. right? Uh, yeah, but if if I don't vacate it, I, well, I don't have that issue. Can I just comment on the issue mm -hmm. if mm -hmm. the street is vacated? Because currently the part of the turnaround is on the vacated street and the other part of it is actually on Antioch College property. Correct. So what would happen is if we wanted to make an improvements for the turnarounds, we would have to purchase the right of way from Antioch to get the needed space from that. With the current configuration? The current configuration is grandfathered, so it would work, but if we wanted to expand right, it, we right. would have to fix all that. Mm -hmm. But okay. even without vacating it, we would still have to do that. For part of it, that's for part of it, for yes. Part, for yeah. part of it, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so John, I guess I have a quick question for you. After all this discussion, um, you know, your recommendation was to disapprove of this. Um, do you still maintain that, or do you think this is something that can be approved with some thought out and um, um, uh, conditions that uh, you know hold the college to some of these things that? Uh, that we're talking about here tonight. Yeah, I saw a lot of uh, concerns presented from our utility departments, um, which is part of the reason why, uh, the main reason why I recommend disapproval. Uh, after hearing testimony from the night, uh, I do see an avenue for approval if the commission 
uh, were to move in that, that direction. One would be that they would have to maintain the uh, turnaround access. Uh, the other one would be to, they would have to maintain a 10 foot easement for the sanitary line. The third one would be that it would maintain uh, the easement for an access for the water, mine, water line that runs behind President Street. Um, the one sticking point that I have is the notion of the gates. And if uh, Mr. Hamby and his crew are okay with that, then, uh, then that is something that we could bring back as, as an as a agreement. But I, I'm not sure if, they would, if that would comply with their policies and regulations. So is this something that we could um, ask Antioch to come back with in writing what their recommendations are and have an opportunity to have um, the village staff review it and work it out so that we could either we could approve it. Uh, you could you could uh, ultimately this is a village council action, mm -hmm. so you so could. So we're making a recommendation. So, well, one one possibility would be is you would make an approval with, with the conditions that I listed as as well as exploring the possibility of using gates and coming with a. Uh, an, an agreement to village council, or you can table it and have them present the, the uh, that agreement to you guys. So that would be tabled and then brought back the next. So week. we can continue this hearing next month. Yes, it'd be a continuance. So we can hear from Jason. Jason can talk to Reggie about mm -hmm. the gates. I know we're dragging this out for Reggie. But well, uh, yeah, it it seems like it would be nice well, to we can work have that, out. that understanding. Mm -hmm. We can work that out in the interim and then bring it back to you guys in May. If, if you're going to do that, I, I'd, I'd want the village to uh, be specific on their EPA concern. Either there is or there is not a concern on the farm runoff. I'd like the village to be specific on not 10 feet is the minimum. Right. Specify uh, how yeah. many feet they need. Yeah, is it 10 feet or 15? Yeah, you know, because, you know, uh, um, you know I'd, I'd like that to be specific, both for the village and both for Antioch, so they, so they know, know where they, you know. Someone doesn't come back later and say, well, you know, now we got an 11-foot wide truck, we got, can't get there. Right, right. You, you, you found me? Uh, and... And, and the, the issue, they, they still say there's no clear way to access, uh, let's see, there's, I guess the President Street right away. They say there's no, there's no clear uh, way to access this if the right, right away is vacated. And I think they may be talking about the other one, the northern. So, so that's a misprint on here. There are three present streets. The, right. Yeah. yeah, there's present streets um, right, right over there, and there's a water main right behind those properties. But um, not exactly sure clear as, as to where it is on this map. Um, it actually is in the report though, so I can pull that up. Yeah. So that you know, that that's another concern that I have. You know. Like Paul says, there are three presidents. I don't know what was meant by access to presidents. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't either. I don't so if, sure how if, that, if, that's, if that's if that's not an issue, then whether it's there or not, uh, you know. But as, if it is an yeah, issue, no then it, it has to be addressed. Because they talk about adding. Uh, Topsoil would impair the village's ability to have access to that, to those lines. So, um, I'm. I would just like to hear back, I guess, about whether or not, um, you know, state having some language that said something like, at any point that a gate that a fence is crossing the easement, that there be a gate of this size there, so that you know if there's 
two areas that are fenced out, there would be, you know, four gates all along that easement. I think that would be the the minimum number of gates that, you know, uh, we would need. But well, I would need to check with Jason to see how the gates. Right? Yeah, the gates obviously are that's just yeah. my uh, thoughts on it. So, so, so to kind of go back through some of these items. So it sounds like we're thinking about maybe just continuing this hearing next month. And in that interim, we want Reggie and Jason to work out the gates. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We want to talk about the filling or the easement, because that's another one of Jason's concerns. Mm -hmm. We have the question about Ohio EPA runoff with respect to the storm and whether that's even related to this because of the swale versus the easement four, the cul-de-sac, and five, the easement width. Yeah, I'm sorry, what was it regarding the cul-de-sac? Just the, that it stays and kind of identifying its okay. current dimensions, I guess. Is there anything else that? I think you covered it for me. Did you, did you mention this President Street issue? I'm not sure what that issue is. Yeah. Is that in? Let's see this in response to the summary. The fire department then said Warren Ford's line runs behind President Street right away. Oh, There's I see. There's no way to access if the right of way is vacated. So, so does President Street right away extend through the golf course yeah. behind the homes on? <laughs> gotcha. But not. Well, okay, but not through any uh, property. There's water and sewer line that runs yeah. in there. Actually, the right away is not on the property. Right away is not on the residential properties. So there's an easement. Yeah, it's oh, it's, so it's a street easement. right away. Yeah. Yes. Running north and south. Correct. Yes. I don't see yeah, the right of way on the GIS map. I don't think it's on there. And I, I have a drawing with the electric, with the water line on it. I just am looking for it in this file. <laughs> so what is the fire department proposing? Because there's no access now. No, no, no. It's, it, I think it's the village is saying that if they vacate it, they can't get to this uh, water line. Access to the utilities that are there currently. But it I sounds like they can, they, they, they can, yeah, they'll, we will, we're not vacating that. Well, and as long as it intersects well, well, urban. That's, that, that's what I wanted to clarify. Yeah, yeah. yeah. When, okay. When they come okay. Back. So there's no, there's no question okay. as to what that is. So, to clarify your clarification, <laughs> are, are you saying that the fire department is, has a concern that if you vacate that alley, the Herman Street alley, they won't have full access to the President Street? No, it's no. water and electric. There's a four-inch water main, uh, water line running behind President Street right-of-way. There's no clear way to access this if the right-of-way is vacated. Right. But are they talking about the president? Right no, no, Street it's the right Herman away? Street right away because they intersect, correct? Okay, yeah, so, so you see where the Bluebird Trail is? Yeah. yeah that, that, I think that easement runs yes, right yes. north and south through there. Is that correct? Those sticking work trees you see there are right on top of the center line of President Street. So the, the kiosk, geothermal kiosk is the east end of President Street. The residential property line is the west end of President Street. Yeah, yeah. got it. Yeah, okay. But that connects to the turnaround, not farther down. Yeah, so if you maintain the cul-de-sac, you should yeah. be okay there. Yeah. yeah, and just incidentally, the college agreed to 100 feet buffer um, when you approve the solar array um, off of that off of the property. Right, right. Okay. All right. John, do you understand the issues that need to be worked I'd like through? I like to review Reggie? what we have here. Um, you've asked to come back with more specific uh, identification of the concern for Environmental Protection Agency. Uh, with these more specific about the uh, minimums needed for the sanitary sewer line and reach an agreement on the access gates, uh, and also to identify the cul-de-sac and how. Uh, what the future plans are for that. Is there missing anything? Anything else that we want on the list? I I still 
still would like it to be specific about this Why? President Street right yeah. away. What's the, the, the President Street right away. And yes. where yes. intersects Just department to make sure there's access. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can we do that? And then, Judy, do we need a motion to continue this hearing next month? You will, if you're motion tabling table. it, yes. Okay. Yeah. Motion to table. Uh, if, if there's any further discussion on this, or do you want to move on? I motion to table this discussion until next meeting. Okay. Is that Second. a proper? Is that <laughs> Second. Yep. You want to take the roll, Judy? You can do it by voice, but I can call the roll if you. So let's just call that roll. Read. Yes. Styles. Yes. Pelzo. Yes. And Sims. Yes. Recording. Okay. Okay. The next item on the list is the request by the college to vacate um, a section of East North College Street right of way. Um, John, do you want to start over? I'll say the, all this stuff again. Sure. This is application 15-004 for a uh, right-of-way vacation of East North College Street by Antioch College. The yeah, college has requested the village to vacate part of the right-of-way eastern portion of North College Street. This portion is located between Livermore and Corey Street at 66 feet in width. It's 100, excuse me, 1,036 feet in length. The street has been closed from automobile traffic uh, for decades, however, it is fire access for the existing buildings located along the street. The proposal was heard on December 8, 2014. However, the Planning Commission decided to table the application. <coughs> it is also located in the E1 Education Institution Zoning District. I reviewed the requirements, they're the same from the last vacation, so I'm just going to go right into the findings. Um, the right of way is not identified as a through street in, uh, for automobile traffic in the village's comprehensive plan. It is currently utilized uh, in associated with uh, the college. There is a walking path lo located on the north side of the street. The street is not accessible to automobiles uh, due to gates, but there's also uh, a parking area of most of what the street right away is right now. Um, adjacent properties uh, are actually can be accessed by adjoining streets, and uh, most of the, pro the properties are on college properties, so. That would be fine. Um, consulted with the utility departments and the Miami Township Fire Department. The fire department is concerned about maintaining fire access to the buildings located along the streets. Um, if that access can be maintained, they have no issues with the uh, proposed vacation. Uh, water and electric. There are utility lines that are present under the street and access would need to be maintained. Um, let me see if I can pull up a um, brief kind of overview of what this area looks like. And probably just use the old master plan. Uh, that made it worse. So this area right where the cursor is is North College. Um, and uh, the utility lines actually run in a diagonal line from the south end of North College Street up to the north end of North College and Quarry right here. So it's a long diagonal line that runs down from the south to the north right there. And uh, actually, it's a sewer line that does that. And those. Uh, Ma those, maintenance, uh, those utilities will need to be main maintained access to those, those utilities. For transportation needs, although not identified as a possible automobile connector, the tree can be utilized as a pedestrian and bicycle connect connection between the village, the school, and Little Miami Trail. The applicant has indicated that they intend to convert the street into a brick pedestrian and bicycle pathway. Uh, the plan was presented as part of the Antioch Master Plan and also the Antioch Eco Village uh, Charette in March 2015. Um, as for the validity of the applicant's reasons for requesting the vacation, the applicants say that they intend to utilize the vacated right of way as a brick walking and biking path that benefits students. The charrette, this path is prominently displayed as, connecti as a connectivity feature for future site development. 
Some aspects of the plan show development possibly encroaching into the middle section of the vacated right of way. These areas must be developed in a way to either relocate or avoid the existing utilities. And uh, I can also show you that as well. It's in my reports. So, um, oh. come on. Oh, that's too far. Here it is, right there. So this is uh, the charrette plans for the eco village from March for North College, and it shows um, buildings that would protrude into um, the existing right of way. There are these kind of decor um, these entryway sections of building that would frame the uh, brick connector path as it goes uh, east along the the right of way. Um, so our current utility lines are right here. So if this is developed and this element is included in there, these utility lines would have to be uh, relocated in order to allow the building to move forward. Uh, so that was a concern that was brought up by our utility departments. Um, as far as general citizen reaction to the proposed vacation, village offices have not received any comments from the proposed vacation. Uh, staff notified adjacent property owners within 100 feet of the alley vacation area and the street vacation area and sent notice to Yellow Springs News for three weeks. The agenda item was announced as the past two village council meetings. And uh, we did notify all of the adjacent property owners uh, by mail and also beyond uh, the scope of the requirements in the, the code. So after looking at all of this stuff and talk, consulting with our utility departments, their biggest concern is maintaining access to the existing utilities. Um, there needs to be some clarity as to how the area is going to be repaired between the utility departments and the college. Uh, currently, the um, village utility departments can only replace, um, if there's a, a main break and they come in and fix it, they uh, replace with gravel and then uh, they will not be able to replace with the like material if they use brick. Uh, so that is something that needs to be worked out between the village and uh, the school. Uh, however, um, seeing all that stuff, uh, staff does recommend that the Planning Commission re rec recommend that Village Council approve uh, this right-of-way vacation uh, with the conditions as follows, and that is to maintain the utility easement for existing utility access and to relocate the utilities, to have the, the applicant relocate utilities if at some point in the future uh, they do put a building uh, along the vacated right-of-way where the utilities would be located and also that they uh, work with our uh, utility departments to on, a, on, a, on an agreement for restoration of utility maintenance when that does arise. So there's no misunderstanding between both entities. Any questions? Any questions for John? Uh, Reggie, do you want to add to that sure um, so some of the same reasons for vacating Herman um, uh, apply to this vacation as well but again it's we're trying to create a campus that is bike and pedestrian friendly um, having a street there ever having a street there where cars can travel would be counter to that um, it would also be a public safety risk with as we grow and as we see more students on campus um, we want to keep, you know, parking and, and cars all on the perimeter of the campus. Uh, we'd like to build this brick pathway. Um, as you can see, it's, you know, aesthetically pleasing. This is, of course, the pathway we started. Um, if you want to pass that around in front of Pearl, that's going to eventually run from Livermore over to Quarry. This is what it looks like now with the asphalt. So just envision the same type of brick pathway going across, um, but it really helped beautify the campus. Uh, brick pavers are also, you know, um, pervious 
and it helps us manage our storm water as well. Uh, so it has environmental benefits. And as John mentioned, you know, with, with the development of, of the Antioch Village and our future plans, uh, again, trying to honor these the 25 feet setbacks um, makes it more difficult. We'd like to have more options, such as he's displaying there with the, the buildings that do encroach the, the right of way. And uh, if and when that development ever took place, we, yeah, we would then work out relocating those utilities. Um, in the short run, uh, again, of course, the village would maintain an easement there so that they can get at the uh, storm and, and sewer uh, and water that's running through there. And in fact, you're, you're getting ready to rip all that up uh, to put that new 10-inch main from Livermore to Quarry. And, you know, the, the idea of doing pavers instead of blacktopping it back is actually going to save the village money. Um, when I talked to Johnny and the, the contractors he's working with, it, it would make more sense to us that after you get the 10 inch line installed to just put back the compacted gravel, which is the bed for the brick pavers, um, and save the cost of repaving it with blacktop all the way. Um, so yeah, that's really it. Those are the reasons and I, I, I think it makes sense. Okay. Any questions for, for Reggie? Reggie, with the, the building that's present, presently there, um, the fire department, I don't know if that building is vacant or if it's in use, but in case of a fire. Are we talking about the student union? Uh, now this, uh, this building right here. Oh, that's uh, Pennell House. Um, so, panel, where is panel on there? Help me out, John. Uh, it looks like it kind of. <coughs> here. That's right panel, here? that's Weston. Yeah, that's Weston. This one? That's panel. That's panel, right. And then the that's Weston. So West and um, what's the street there? Is it Limestone? What's the street that comes up to West? Well, see, there's President, but, president. but president. that's President. <laughs> okay. But president, there's president, president again. Yeah, President <laughs> does not reach reach that building, so I'm. President reaches Weston, but it would not reach Pennell. All right. Um, now Pennell is somewhat isolated. Um, I guess the thing we could do there is on that that we'd have to make the the brick paver strong enough to yeah. you know hold a fire truck if it crossed it well the, the, the pavers would have to be unless you can enter from the back in the future plans the, the pavers would have to be strong enough to to hold a fire equipment Yes. Yeah. Um, how would you dissuade cars and let fire equipment through there? Like, are if if you're going to maintain access for fire equipment, which I would think that you would want to do anyway, um, even if we didn't stipulate it, um, what I mean are those like little things that come out of the ground there on that drawing? to dissuade cars from going through there? Yeah, they're, they're showing posts there. Um, you can get removable ballards. Right. So Locked. that's probably what we would do. Okay. I've got a question for John. Sure. The, as I walk through it, I counted three or four uh, they look like drainage ditches. Yes. Uh, is that our responsibility? That's our that's our storm sewer. Yeah. Okay. So I 
if they put pavers in, or would they have to be? They would have to slope it. See, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm wondering if, if if the storm sewer was there to get the water from, uh, was it limestone down the quarry, or was it? Did we have other water issues while we 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 put drains down the middle there? And I'm not sure exactly what the historical concerns were for installing it, the drain there, but it, I ran it by Jason and he said it is his drain. So, um, and that and extends up North, North College? And that's that's the one that goes diagonal that I was talking about. That goes in the south part of North Cal East North College Even the North part. To, all the way to Corey, right? To Corey, yes. yes. Okay. okay, any more questions? Uh, if not, we'll open the public hearing. Um, okay, so we'll open the public hearing. If anyone has any comments um, they'd like to make publicly about this matter, identify yourself, step up to the microphone, and say your views. And Paul Abendroth. As a firefighter, I'd like to add another dimension to this, and that is height. Uh, the fire trucks are 11 and a half feet tall so uh, because it is going to be a walkway people tend to not worry about the the clearance above and uh, if it's going to be used for fire engines in an emergency the trucks will have to get under the 11 and a half foot height. thank you thanks paul uh, anyone else Mike Kelly, um, my only, uh, my biggest concern along with the, uh, the Herman Street vacation is that right now the village has options. They have flexibility to um, add utilities or to access utilities. This is a reducing of options and I, I know that there's a master plan but to me, if you make any approval of either of these vacations, it should be very specific the way that Jerry mentioned so that, you know, no offense to Reggie, he might be gone in two years and he's saying we're going to do it this way, but if there's nothing tied into the approval, I hope you're not, but I mean, <laughs> if there's nothing tied into the approval, then, you know, those gates on Herman Street could keep out pedestrians. Right now we have access because it is a right of way, unless there's something specific in your approval that says, there will be this, and it's tied into that, then um, it won't happen. I mean, re regimes change at the college. I mean, it's it's gone through lots of changes over the years, and, and you know, this has always been working. Um, I'm not, I understand there, there are bigger and better plans, and I'm not against those plans. I'm just afraid that unless we're very specific on what is approved, then they can come back eight months later, and unless you follow up or they can change some little facet that could create problems for the utilities or the fire department. So that's my only concern. Thanks. Anyone else? Well, there's no more comment. We'll close the public hearing. Uh, any more discussion here? Yeah, I have one from a, from a village standpoint. Uh, if we were to approve both uh, I'm concerned that uh, for safety reasons and so forth, we have, have no access to Quarry Street. Uh, and that, that, that does kind of bother me in, in terms of the routes that future uh, emergency vehicles may have to take to Either they, they come down Xenia Avenue or they go all the way up Quarry Street to Ellen right. Street. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm this concerned with the the overall future plans of the, of, of the college not not having at least one access street that, that goes all the way through the, uh, the quarry. Uh, it, 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 years ago when I first moved, it was somewhat access because you could you could get to the old Antioch Inn and be able to drive the, the whole way. Mm -hmm. um, I'm dating myself now, but uh, <laughs> but now I'm thinking about 
the, the future and, and, and how that area could become populated and there's just, uh, you know, granted the fire department may move eventually, mm -hmm. but the way it is now, it's, it's, it's still, either for, for, for fire or uh, police emergencies, uh, you, you have to go around about. And the proposal for the walkway, would that satisfy your concerns? Uh, it, it would have to be sturdy the whole way through and, and you know, the granite, you can put post in the center to keep vehicles out, but uh, in emergencies, and Paul, correct me if, I, if I'm wrong, sometimes time is of the essence. If you have to stop and lift up posts, mm -hmm. go lift up posts, you know, it, it, uh, it's, uh, some may say it's an unnecessary hazard. Just a thought, too, on that point that, um, you know, up to Pennell House, um, and it could be done in a way to support vehicles, and then Ballard's past that point, so that there's always access for the fire department, so we don't, you know, on, on that Corey Street side. I mean, there, there are options, yeah, but I think we right. can work them out. Okay. Well, Rose, what are your thoughts? We'll just put you on the spot. We'll go on a line here. <laughs> um, I'd like, I like the three stipulation conditions that are in um, the staff recommendation. I would like to see some sort of condition on. Um, uh, allowing um, emergency vehicles through there, even if it is only to Weston, you know, um, up to Weston. Okay. I, I agree with what Rose said. I, I, th I think the stipulations that staff have made, the three, and then the walkway emergency vehicles having access to that. Okay. I mean, I think I'm on the same boat. Um, Jerry, do you have anything else? Uh, yeah, I, I, like I say, I'm, again, I'm, I'm just uncomfortable with, with uh -huh. uh, giving up our, our access I, straight across. I, mean, I think yeah. that if we're going to suggest that, if, if we're going to stipulate that there's access for emergency equipment, we just make it for the entire length. But that's what I'm, I would say. It, it has to be for the, for the entire length. I, I uh, see in, in that way if the college had future plans for other, other type of development further up, uh, the uh, access would be there. It, my, and and my, my other, <clears throat> And again, I, I want it to be very specific in terms of if uh, we had to, to move, or, or if the sewer, I guess it's a sewer line, mm -hmm. if it had to be moved, you know, you know that's, that's not an easy task. Mm -hmm. right. So, you know, it would be real specific on... Um, well, if, if, if they yeah. had to, if they were to propose a building over the easement, that the village controlled, they would need to come back, right, and, and modify that easement and the utilities. Well, see, that's that's what I'm wondering. If it was vacated, well, it's we're not going to build over the yeah. easement. It's just a, they're proposing well, brook building over the right of way, but not an easement. Well, but we talk about having to to move a utility, and um, is that utility a sewer line? That we're talking about may have to be moved yeah, if, in the if, future. If Depending we, on where this comes well, out. I'm not sure yeah. why, but yeah. again, and, and if we built buildings like that in that area, we're gonna there there's gonna be digging going on anyway. So it probably would not be a huge matter to reroute at that time. But I really don't know I, I don't see why we have to move I don't I don't understand. 
I guess well, I see, then, 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 then I want that spelled out because, like we say, you don't see it, and apparently some of our, our staff sees it. So, then that should be. It's spelled. interesting to know the reasoning behind yeah. why we would have to do those underground lines that exist. Well, if we have to access at the, at the underground right lines here, we need to have five feet on each side. Then we need to have that this moved to at least the central, the center line of, of the uh, the pathway. That way, we can maintain the access. If some if there was to be a break in this vicinity, we could get we can get to yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, having it as a condition, if and when we did build something like that, I, of course we agree to that. But I, I imagine we would. <laughs> Build in a manner that we wouldn't impact those lines okay. and right. have mm -hmm. the movement. Yeah. You know, this is all conceptual. I mean, yes. right. when you come right down to the civil engineering of it, we would we move the building. Yeah, we would right. move the building. <laughs> well, I don't think you could build a permanent structure on top of an easement anyway. So they would have to come back to. Mm -hmm. Well, they kind of did it where the wellness center was. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Well, we'd have the opportunity, the commission and council would have the opportunity here to design the easement in such a way that all of those eventualities could be considered and addressed. Okay. So we would design the easement to address the eventuality that there's a possibility that the sewer line might need to be relocated and that the applicant would be responsible for relocating that if at that time that they decided to build something there. Yeah, that's number, and then number two would be that you know, if for some reason we had to dig up the uh, a storm drain, that's their understanding that it, it would go back as gravel and they would be responsible for redoing papers if they so decided. Yeah, I, I made a note made that a note. said mutually agreeable repair plan gotcha. prior to approval by council gotcha. okay. as a condition. Um, I mean, that's a month away, so you can work with the utility guys. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so if we're going to try to craft something here, are we looking at trying to approve this with conditions tonight? Yes, and if you, it seems like you've honed the specific mm -hmm. conditions down. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so what those conditions are. Do we need to get some language, Judy? I have uh, some of them right now. I'm just trying to write them all out. One is that um, we, would design the, uh, the app we would design the utility easement uh, to maintain existing access and also possible future relocation access. Uh, and then the applicant would be responsible for relocating lines if construction of the building were to occur on site. Uh, the other one is that the applicant would be responsible for, well, it would maintain access for emergency vehicles. I also added that they would construct any future improvement pathways in a manner that would support the uh, the weight of a vehicle, a fire truck. Weight and height. Weight and height, yeah. Um, can we make it a, a condition that to build on the easement, they would have to come back to council, not just move the, the utilities? That just seems sort of unwieldy. We could well, it wouldn't build on the easement. I mean, that so, would be and that's, you can't build on the easement. So if you can't build on the easement, why would they need to move the utility lines? The utility well, lines would, are underneath. They would have to the, come back and look, uh, apply okay. for a movement of so the So that easement. shouldn't, is, the, is that relevant to a condition for this? I don't know that it is. I mean, you. Talking about moving them, and they just, they're not allowed to build on the easement? They wouldn't be allowed to build, build on the easement, but um, as it was presented in the charrettes, there was a, a very, there was a very specific focus on making this part of the campus a gateway. So having these this kind of entrance treatment, although this proposal might not be the exact mm -hmm. right, outcome of that, there will be some element that we need to be prepared and plan for when that arises. So should they have to come to us or are we making an agreement with them right now or when council approves it that they can that they just need to move the 
water line, the the utilities, and therefore the easement moves. No, no. I think we're. I think we might be. Um, I'm sorry. Putting no, not at all. There's two. You know, there's two considerations here. There's the easement. Obviously, mm -hmm. the village is going to maintain an easement for access, utility access, and, and maintenance and repair. But also, um, what staff has suggested in the in the staff report is that there will be an agreement entered into between the parties, and that agreement could spell out a lot of the discussion that you're having here. It wouldn't necessarily be built into an easement. Mm -hmm. Okay. It would be built into an agreement between the parties. And that could include the payment repair plan. And, it could. Sure. Yeah, okay. And you can make the con the agreement a condition that would go to the council. As well. Right. Yeah, because that needs to be worked out before mm -hmm. any approval, approval. by That's council. Sure. That's correct. Mm -hmm. So I have, I have a question about that. It, you've got, I, I think, Rose, you're addressing that second bullet point yeah. as some matter of confusion. If the first bullet point's changed to maintain the utility access easement, I'm sorry, main the utility easement, and you take out the second bullet point, is Antioch still going to be able to do what they desire with regard to this vacation, but you're not opening the door? at all, you're simply leaving it that that utility access is maintained, which would force them to return if, in fact, they wanted to. Mm -hmm. Are you okay? Correct. If they wanted to build over. They would have to return. Right. Right, because you just don't open the door with that second bullet point. I'm not going to So simply leave that point out. Okay. And change your language to maintain the utility easement so you're not the existing utilities, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Can, can I ask one brief question? Sure. Um, if you vacate the right of way right now, as a villager, I'm allowed to walk through there. If you vacate right. the right of way, does that mean I can no longer walk through there? I mean, I'm not, no well, offense well, again, the right standpoint, he, but he's, you're always welcome on campus. Well, I know, that's what you say, but I mean, <laughs> I'm just saying, if you vacate the right of way right now. I can walk through there. If Reggie's gone or somebody else is there, and you vacated the right of way, they can put a fence up and say public can't come in. Is that? They, they, that's my question. That's, they, they they could. Right. I, okay. I, I think they, the same with Herman. That that yeah. was my right. One of my two concerns, I guess. Like right now, we have an access because it's we're a village resident or anybody, I guess. Because there's a right of way, but if the right of way is gone, yeah, it's a public right of way now. The utilities, and I'm working on the utilities, I can't go there. I mean, I know Reggie says I can't. Well, I think the history of the college shows that you know, the campus has always been a welcoming campus. Yeah, and I don't expect it to change at all, but yeah. like I said, there, unless it's spelled out, somebody else can come in and say, you know, we're not going to allow that anymore, or the access is way over here now, or something. So. Could we add a condition that there's a walking, you know, the, a public walking path? Is that legal? Well, I have a question then for John. Is it is it currently a public access or is it simply a utility access? Because you may be adding something that didn't exist in the first place. If it's the, the street is it's a it's a closed right of way, but it's still accessible from for the public. Okay. Yeah, that's what I was asking. If they're both right of ways, then if all of a sudden they're gone, you know, unless it's stipulated or specified, then the college could. That's what I'm asking. I'm not thinking they're going to be there's dim or gloom. And we do have the documentation from the 1968 Planning Commission meeting mm -hmm. that does go into that detail. You guys want to read that? Is that applicable to this issue? Uh, it was just to uh, Close it. for closing the street. Okay. <laughs> okay, so now, right now, we have three conditions maintaining the easement, um, agreeing with respect to restoration. And the third one is the emergency vehicle access to the entire length. And and you then also had to strengthen the whatever the uh, you make the walkway out of so that it will it also support. hold and that the height will be maintained. Height. That was very inarticulate, but I'm sure that John <laughs> has that. 
So the question is, do we want to talk about that issue as a, as a condition? About, main about maintaining public access. Oh. Because what we're saying essentially is that it becomes private property. With this recommendation, we're recommending <coughs> the council essentially. Mm -hmm. You want to put a condition on there that we have to maintain public access, that's fine to put on there too. I mean, it's intended. Right, it's a walkway. To welcome our community on the campus. So you could you could just throw that in that first bullet point if you say you maintain the utility easement for u existing utility and public access. Yep. Yeah. That would make me very happy. Great. Mm -hmm. And then we would build it into the agreement between the parties. Mm -hmm. And just to clarify, that's for pedestrian access. Yeah. Right. right. Yes. yes. Not vehicle. Pedestrian and bicycle yes. access. Bicycle. Bicycle. Mm -hmm. Or non-automobile access, maybe, if you want to add segways and scooters. Mm -hmm. Non-motorized public no, access? Non -motorized segways and... Uh, non-motorized public yeah, access, non -motorized yeah. Public access. Although, where do you draw the line of electric bikes? Golf carts. <laughs> Golf carts. Yeah. Who's, who's the cop that's going to stay I don't know. Let's say non-motorized. I like non-motorized yeah. vehicles. You okay with that? I, I, well, that, that eliminates a golf cart. Uh -huh. and, and they use golf carts. Are people so, using so it right now for golf carts? No, cars? I mean, their maintenance folks use use golf carts. Like, I think but you're only stipulating for the public. Right? Public, yeah. Okay. I, I just think the plan too far myself okay, in, then. in that part because sure. you know we just don't know what the future is going to be in terms of uh, so you're saying just leave it as public access public access period and, and period and then if the issue comes up later you know I just what at the very least I want to keep cars off our campus we want to keep right. cars off but you know, do you want to keep a golf cart off for handicapped person or not necessarily an electric one. And we have we and have and public our, our public comes on campus with electric, electric golf carts, carts yeah. many times. Um, the gasoline power power no. Right. Still an electric motor counter motorized. Well, I think what we do is just say public access. If it's an issue, then we'll address it. Mm -hmm. I mean, otherwise you start yeah, splitting gears really and I've you've got an eight paragraph. Yeah, put up the restriction versus us putting it in here. Okay. Um, yeah, it's, um, okay, do you want to you read those like, one last time? <laughs> this, is, this is what I have. I have maintained the easement for utility and public access. I have uh, reached an agreement on utility repair and maintenance. I have maintained access for fire emergency vehicles. I have strengthened uh, access path to support emergency vehicles and maintained the height clearance for those emergency vehicles. Okay. So if we're all in agreement with that, do we have a motion to approve? I, I will move this approval. With, the follow, with those conditions? Yes, with those conditions. Second. Judy, you want to call the roll? Indeed. Sims? Yes. <clears throat> Stiles? Yes. Pelzo? Yes. Reed? Yes. Okay. And you get to listen to this whole thing again. Yeah. <laughs> and act like I never heard it before. <laughs> All right, thanks. Um, the last item we have on our agenda is uh, a text amendment that John would like to discuss with us. Yes. It's an application for uh, application number 15 6 that's actually made by the Village of Yellow Springs. Uh, it's a text amendment for the fee schedule. Uh, the Village Planning staff has been working on revising the permit fee schedule for zoning and subdivision permits. The last time the schedule was revised was in 1993, which is 22 years ago. Since then, the code has been moved from Section 11 of this Code of Ordinances. And I actually, just looking back, I should have included that resolution. It, it cites Section 11 heavily, the ordinance does. 
uh, which doesn't exist anymore. It's now Section 12, and then uh, we updated our section, uh, our zoning code in 2013. So even if those sections were changed, it would still not refer to the correct parts of the ordinance. Um, that being said, we looked at, we embarked on uh, looking at a new fee schedule for uh, our permits. We took into account uh, the fee structures for different um, municipalities in the area, as well as Williamsburg and in Bellevue, Kentucky, where I used to work. Um, and based that, that uh, our fee schedule on that information, as well as um, the amount of time and, and money that is spent in doing some certain applications such as the planning commission. Uh, obviously costs for mail has increased, costs for advertising in the newspaper has increased uh, along with uh, the hourly cost for administrative staff. Um, requirements for the uh, for an update in the zoning code is spelled out in section 1280.02a of the village code ordinances. Uh, these, are, uh, these are basically uh, guidelines and not all of these may apply to a text amendment. One is uh, clarifying the intent of the code, two is correcting an error in the code, three is addressing change to state legislation, recent case law or opinions of the Attorney General of the State of Ohio, four, uh, if it affects the implementation of the Yellow Springs Conference Plan and the Vision Yellow Springs Miami Township document, five, if it promotes compliance with change in other country, federal, or county, state or federal regulations, Six, in the event of the amendment, would add a use to the district that would be fully consistent with the purpose of the district and the character of the range of uses provided for within the district. Seven, that it would not create incompatible land uses within a zoning district. Eight, be supported by the findings of reports, studies, and other documentation on functional requirements, contemporary building practices, and environmental requirements, and similar technical items. Nine, if applicable, will be consistent with the village's ability to provide adequate public facilities and services. And 10, be consistent with the village's desire to promote public health, safety, convenience, comfort, prosperity, and general welfare of the community. Uh, the Planning Commission can make a recommendation to approve, deny, or have a conditional approval uh, to the village council regarding the uh, text amendment request. Sorry, it's a typo. Uh, staff has found that the proposed amendment would clarify the adopted zoning ordinance because it eliminates a lot of inconsistencies with the old uh, fee structure as well as uh, better accounts for present day pricing and uh, an at cost uh, requirements or at, at cost uh, things that the that staff would conduct. So just looking at the document here, and, uh, the fees actually I'm only, they're only being raised in general $5. Right now the, the zoning permit fee is $10. Um, the construct the permit fee for new construction does go up a little bit more. Uh, kind of it goes more into more detail about multifamily and commercial uh, construction. So you would have three to five dollar flat fee plus ten dollars per residential unit, unit over four, or every one thousand square feet over five thousand square feet for commercial spaces. Um, we changed the the uh, regulation the the fees for permits for signs. Uh, the present regulation says it's $10 per, uh, uh, for the first for one sign that's 50 square feet and then an extra like $5 for additional square feet. For the, from my experience, it doesn't really affect whether, uh, the review does not affect whether or not the, the sign is bigger or smaller for the most part. Uh, it does, however, affect if you have multiple signs. Uh, so we made it a per sign uh, fee instead of a size uh, based uh, fee schedule. Um, changing use permit goes up five dollars. Um, plan unit development goes up from uh, from I think seventy five dollars to one hundred fifty. The final plan application is seventy five dollars. Uh, a level B plan review, which is a review that a site plan review that would go to planning commission for approval, such as uh, the hotel uh, is now going to be a $100 flat fee plus a $500 refundable deposit. And this is a deposit that um, we actually use in Bellevue. It worked pretty well. It covers engineering and other outside service costs. And uh, the balance is returned to the applicant after the plan is reviewed. 
if so, they pay for the first five hundred dollars for the, let's say, engineering, and then um, we would eat the rest, we would ha we would have the rest of the cost if it goes over five hundred. If it stays under five hundred, we don't use it. We return it to the applicant, uh, so that helps them out a little bit. Uh, Reapplications uh, are fifty dollars. They were they were actually not even in um, the old uh, re the old documents. Uh, conditional uses have gone from thirty-five dollars to one hundred dollars, and that's a reflection of staff time commitments plus the raise in, in stamp prices and uh, and, and notifications in the newspaper. Uh, lot divisions have gone up a have gone up a little bit, and there's now a fifteen dollar per lot. Uh, add to that, there used to be um, I think a flat fee. Map and text amendments have gone up. Uh, I think they're doubled in price. Uh, applications to the Board of Zoning Appeals have increased from $35 to $100. The zoning certificate went from 10 to 15. Uh, appeals uh, were, were raised a little bit. And if you win your appeal, you get part of it back. So you get $30 to refund it if it's affirmed. And then uh, see what else. Right away vacation requests have gone up from $25 to $50 and $100 if no petition is included. Uh, there's apparently language in section 1224.03 that if you have a petition from adjacent property owners for the right away vacation that it actually goes down. Uh, and then I added an, an, uh, a line that was not included in the uh, fee schedule for if somebody starts work on a project without a permit that there is a 50% of uh, fine attached to that permit when they do come in and get a permit. So if you build a fence, it's 720, 750 more off of 15. So uh, that's just a basic overview of those. And uh, it, the text map basically would adjust section 1272.04 covering fees. Uh, currently, the language says. Um, the resolution, uh, a fee schedule adopted by a resolution of the village council and then ends. And then it would just add and contained in Appendix A of this code and then it would add a section at the end of the code which would be Appendix A which would contain the fee schedule information for the zoning code. Uh, so based on uh, the, looking at other zoning, at other zoning code permit fees um, and looking at this, it's actually a modest increase from other places Xenia has Pretty, pretty, a lot higher fees. Um, one of the, I looked at a municipality in Clermont County. I'm blanking on the name of it right now, but their their fees were a lot higher than this. So uh, we're actually coming in on the low end of present day fee schedules. Uh, so with that, I would r make a recommendation to Planning Commission to uh, send a, a, vo a vote of approval to Village Council regarding these uh, text amendments. Do you have any questions? John, I have one question, and, sure. that's, and that's on G. Uh, wouldn't it read better that a fine without a permit would be an additional 50% of the cost of the permit? I think that's what you're saying, right? Is the permit, yes, it's an additional. It's an additional 50% of the cost. Any other questions for John? Uh, yeah, um, I don't see replat in here. Is that in some other part of the zone? Mm. Uh, yeah, replat is um, actually in the subdivision regulations okay. for their, their fees. Some of these, some of the fees are in the subdivision regulations. So, uh, replat was one of those. Okay. Any other questions for John? I mean, it's did well, I, I? I have. I'm sorry. Uh, under, under the fence and accessory structure permit, mm -hmm. um, was the reasoning for those to be the same, or accessory structures, including include fences, sheds, decks? Garages, uh, they're all pretty okay. straightforward okay. structures. It's when you start to get into the new construction housing that it gets more complicated and you need to do some more intense uh, site, re site plan review. Okay. 
Okay. Any other questions? Okay, this again is a public hearing, so we're going to open up the floor for any comments or questions from anyone here. Uh, again, step forward, address the microphone, and identify yourself. All right. So there's no comments. Um, if that is the case, we'll close the public hearing. Uh, do we have any more discussion here? Any more questions for John? No. Do we want to entertain a motion to send this to council with our recommendation that they approve these uh, these increases? So moved. Just what you said. <laughs> so I, I move that we we send to our council uh, appendix A the uh, updated fee schedule. Can I uh, make one suggestion, I guess, uh, and that would be in your motion that you include the amendment that you, the, the change text for G. With the change text for G. Right. Right, Second. right, right. Okay. Would you like to call the... Uh, Hozo? Yes. Styles? Yes. Sims? Yes. Reed? Yes. All right. I mean, it's only 20 years. That's pretty. <laughs> and, I, I, and I only really moved you up to Bellevue, which was 2003. So, mm -hmm. okay. 10 years. Okay, I think the last item on our agenda is um, the planner's report. So, I. Uh, didn't have a, ch a chance to really get this in your packet, but I worked on it um, over the weekend. Um, and I have some ideas for some future text amendments for the zoning regulations that I want you guys to consider in a future meeting. Uh, one would be swimming pool regulations. <laughs> and I am not sure if these got swept away when the zoning codes were written or if we just never really had them, uh, but we need them. Uh, because we need to have guidelines for making sure that kids and other people are safe uh, around swing, uh, bodies of water and swimming pools are one of them. Um, so uh, regulations that I'm proposing would basically uh, re have pools be set back at least three feet from the side and rear yard. They'd be only allowed in the rear yard to be considered an accessory structure. Um, they have to be completely enclosed by a fence of at least four feet in height. Uh, that has a, the access gate has to be uh, self-closing and self-latching. And if you have a deck around your fence, then that requirement is waived because your deck access the fence. Um, so that would be a recommendation that I would have the planning commission consider at the May meeting. The second one would be the zoning lot definition. And this is uh, something I brought up back in January where um, property owners who ha own multiple parcels but have like a house sitting on a bunch of lot lines would be able to um, file a document <coughs> with the zoning office saying that these parcels should be considered a single lot. And then we would have that on record so it would eliminate the need for uh, someone to come and seek a variance for a lot line that their building is built over and they need to build an addition or something. Um, so it would require some certification with the, with the village's uh, planning office um, and then it would just be an <coughs> amendment and definition of the zoning code. The third item is regulations for sidewalk displays, outdoor dining, and sandwich board signs in the right of way in the B1 zoning district. And this amendment would be based on guidelines um, basically to balance the interests of business owners as well as the need to keep the right of way, the pedestrian right of ways, the sidewalks clear for access. Um, and that would be that outdoor display items are items that are currently for sale at the retail establishment. So it would be something that you're actually selling, would be on the street. Um, they would only be permitted in the sidewalk during business hours and up to about half hour uh, after the business closes. So it would give them time to bring that stuff in. Um, that would be for outdoor dining tables as well. Uh, this one, no alcohol is permitted to be served in the right away. Just a clarification that we don't allow, it's just regulations, state regulations that we can't allow the serving of, right of alcohol in the right of way. Uh, and then outdoor displays 
and dining, outdoor dining uh, are only permitted to be within the immediate front of the building location. So it would be the middle, immediate front as you wouldn't be able to have a, a, a business that would just be able to put their tables or their stuff out in front of their neighbor's uh, frontage. Uh, and then at all times, a minimum uh, width of five feet must be maintained on the sidewalk for the passage of pedestrians. So it would, it would ensure that we have at least five feet, which is the minimum for ADA handicap uh, wheelchair access. So that is one uh, thing I'm recommending to, uh, to you guys in, in May. And then finally, uh, setbacks for driveways, residential driveways. We just don't have them. And uh, we have, we've had a couple of instances where there's been some uh, questions concerning where driveways are placed. Uh, so I'm recommending that we create, we draft language that requires driveways to be at least one foot from the side property lines and that they should be sloped away uh, to divert runoff from adjacent properties. So you wouldn't be, your driveway wouldn't be causing your neighbor's garage to flood. Uh, so do you guys have any comments on that section of my staff report? Just the one, when you talk about the outdoor display, mm -hmm. Outdoor dining only permitted in the immediate front of the business location. Yeah, it would be the the if the bills if the business is thirty is a is in a storefront that's thirty feet wide, they would have that thirty feet in front of their business. Okay. They wouldn't be able to go beyond that. But it doesn't restrict the back. No. Okay. No. It's, this is only concerning out, outdoor dining and outdoor displays that are okay. on the street. The, on the street side. Any other questions on that part? Uh, the second one is that uh, is, is regarding code enforcement. I'm beginning the process of enforcing uh, the many village codes, uh, zoning code included, as well as some property maintenance codes that I found in the uh, code of ordinances. And while I would prefer to be diplomatic to diplomatically resolve all issues face to face with on-site meetings, uh, it is not always a very practical thing to do. So part of being in the conversation uh, typically is to send a, a violation letter, uh, and then that usually triggers a phone call, sometimes angry, most times angry, uh, where then we would have a discussion and, and work on resolving the code violation from there. Um, so I went through the zoning code, and the zoning code actually outlines the process for code enforcement. That is, uh, is, is outlined briefly below. Uh, I added my own things in there as well. And I'll tell you where I've kind of added a, an extra layer to kind of uh, help help out uh, people who are, are in violation. Uh, the first one is that this is not in the code, is that I'm going to send an initial warning letter, basically, saying I, I will take a picture of whatever is wrong with their property, and I will say you're in violation of section yada, 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 of yada, yada code, and I'll cite, um, I'll cite that, that specific code, and I will give them ways to remedy the code violation. Um, and I'll give them my contact information so they can call me or email me, and I'll give them 30 days uh, to correct that violation. If that does not trigger uh, a negotiation where then, for example, uh, if somebody gets a letter, they usually call me up and I'm just like, okay, I'm pretty flexible working with people. If you say, give me 10 days, I'll fix this, then I'm gonna hold you to the 10 days. Um, if there's other things, you know, we'll, we, we try to work that out. Um, if I don't hear anything back from somebody or if it's been th 30 days have elapsed and nothing has happened, then I will send the official notice, which has to be sent, uh, according to the code, certified mail or hand delivered. Uh, and it will have an updated picture of the violation with a, a date stamp. And a date stamp is very key to, to successful code enforcement. It'll repeat the same text of the the code that has been violated. It'll uh, include information about a possible fine uh, penalty from the village, which is $100. Uh, it would be a 30-day uh, window again, which is part of the process in the zoning ordinance. And we'll also talk about the availability of village mediation. Now, one thing I forgot to include is that the village mediation is not in the initial warning letter. However, that is something that will be discussed over the phone if, that, if it's determined that we need to go to mediation. Um, in my experience with code enforcement, um, typically things that usually get to the citation process 
before they actually go to mediation. But mediation is usually a step we could do before we go to courts with uh, for a code violation because they tend to be more successful than having a judge look at it. Um, if that does not generate a response or fix the problem, then we will send a citation out for the $100. Uh, and then within 20 days of that, if it's not resolved, uh, the, according to the code, we have to refer to a municipal prosecutor, which would be a uh, municipal court in Xenia. Oh, and okay. yeah, I have never had a code plaint, complaint, I'm not going to board here, go to court. So um, in my eight and a half, nine years now of working in zoning, uh, so I, I hope that we can do code enforcement diplomatically and, and get these issues resolved in a in a copacetic and uh, harmonious fashion. And is that last point is that in the current code or is yes? That, okay, so it's I, already there. I actually had a con um, okay. to get some clarification on on that to find out what that meant. Okay. So yes, uh, I did bring a sample letter. I can show you guys. This would be like the initial warning and. Um, it's pretty straightforward and I, I don't try to hide any information when I uh, send these out and um, is, are there any questions regarding that I just no? wondered and this is just a minor thing mm -hmm. in that initial discussion when you send the warning letter mm -hmm. and they have the 30 days to correct it and I don't know what but if it's something let's say that um, is somewhat weather related or something. So let's say that they really couldn't correct it for 90 mm -hmm. days. Could they negotiate that with you? Yeah. That, it okay, would, well, I can take care of it, but it's going to take me like at least 70 because I have to wait till mm -hmm. it's warm weather or something like that. Sure, yeah. I, like, I, like I said, usually the letter is not to be threatening that we're going to come down sure. hard on somebody. It's, it's say like we need to have a conversation about resolving this. And typically, a lot of our, our codes that are outside the zoning code pertain more to life safety uh, and those types of things. And for example, uh, abandoned buildings and so forth, and, and ma making sure that buildings are boarded up correctly and that, that you can't access them because sometimes kids, you know, want to go in and explore, and the abandoned building might not be structurally safe. So you really don't want them to be in something that could be a fire or a collapse, in imminent danger of collapse. So. Um, those are the issues I'm, I'm looking to address for the most part. Okay. Um, so should I move on? Or do you yeah, why you go ahead and pull cool. on? And, and then the, finally, I'm, I'm starting to work on f permit form revisions. Uh, I'm going to break up, I'm basically breaking up the general permit a little bit. Um, general permit right now, the zoning permit is uh, basically a blanket permit that has a lot of information that you probably would need to fill out if you were building a house or a new building, uh, but not really need to if you're going to build a shed or something. So I want to improve the, split it off and improve the new construction part of it so it's clearer for uh, not only on a zoning standpoint, but also that permit also includes uh, sign-offs and fees for tapping into utilities. So we have more of a clarity about what requirements the village has for utility taps and what, what's required to be built out of that. So uh, kind of separating that out a little bit. The general permit will get a mostly a uh, graphical redesign. It's mostly the same information, just a little bit more clear on what type of accessory structure or general permit that you would be filling out so there would be check boxes, say like checking off a shed as I'm building a shed. And then uh, the fence permit will actually have a, um, a diagram on it so you can draw where your fence is and say it's in a rear yard fence or where your streets are. So this helps uh, visually, it helps, it helps me with finding where everything's going to go and being able to give them clear guidance and it also helps records to show that we have we know exactly where the fence is going to go because they drew it uh, and then finally pool permits and this will just have regulations that we hopefully will pass in the future about pools so that's kind of a little ahead actually but 
when we do get have permit uh, pool swimming pool regulations, that information will be on that permit. Um, and there are other permits I have not yet been able to look at that um, I haven't that are um, I haven't yet to redesign, but I might in the future. So uh, that's basically where we're at right now. So are all these uh, forms available on online? Um, the old forms are. I have not designed the new forms yet. Okay. So that's just something that I'm working on that I just want to get up to date that we're trying to make it easier for people to do stuff in the village and, and get those permits uh, in and out as fast as we can. Will we have to approve those permits, the new draft of the forms? Technically, yes. Okay. So I will, I will bring them to you guys. That's and you're correct. going to be coming back with the text amendments. Yeah, so um, if you guys w feel that you need to initiate that as a zoning action, part is pursuant to the section of the zoning code mm -hmm. pertaining to text amendments, then you would basically make a motion that these would be presented uh, in the next meeting, the May meeting, and we have to give 20 day notice. I mean, is that a sufficient amount of time for you? The outline is basically what the text amendment is going to be. Uh, the reason why I've provided it is that if um, if you guys have any suggestions for changes, I could add that into my drafting of the, the amendments. It could be the May or, or June council meeting, too. If you Is there anything looming for our next month that you are aware of? Uh, I do have to give a report about sidewalks to council. But, uh, other than that. But nothing for nothing for any commission. Oh, well, we have the right away for yeah. 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 That's true. Um, I mean, I think we gotta wait till June. Okay. Um, if that makes sense to everybody else. Sure, that's fine. And in the meantime, I mean, mainly be a part because it's all kind of brand new here. We really haven't really had the time to consider it. And sure. I'm not quite sure why swimming pools were omitted from the rewrite. I'm not sure as either. I'm sure they weren't in the original, in the old one. But regardless. So do we need a motion regarding this, that we would like something in June? No. Well, I don't think so. Agenda plan. Yeah, I think we just, sure. Yeah. Okay. okay. But if it's ready in June, and you, you can probably tell us next month if you think it's good. you're sure. comfortable with advertising it and, and, and doing the formal review okay. and hearing. I'll do that. And then at that point, we probably need a resolution to put it on the agenda for the next week, next month, rather. Sounds good. OK. Uh, is there anything else we need to do for agenda planning? Sounds like you've already got your item, John. So, well, if that's the case, yep. um, do we have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? This